shit going on. But that's Matt Gates up and out of here. Now there's another guy, the Fox host, that they're trying to put as the Secretary of Defense. Another DEI hire, another person that isn't qualified to be the Secretary of Defense. How are we going from a four-star general to a major? No disrespect to my weekend warriors, but he was, a, I think, a reservist. So that means he only put that uniform on once a month, two days out the month, two weeks of training. He did get deployed, but he wasn't putting in no work. So we're about to go down his rundown, too, because this is another person. Birds of a feather flock together. We know that Trump was held liable for sexual in music, and he was found liable for it. Matt Gates is going down for two minors, and then the other guy had an R word in 2017. He got too drunk, and the woman couldn't remember what happened. Oh my goodness. You mean to tell me Trumpy? Oh, Donnie is picking these people? But let's go ahead and find out who this gentleman is and see who you guys voted for that's putting these creeps in office. But hey, my name is Moe IJ, and this is the Mo you know. I'm not making up anything. All I can do is present you all the facts. So give me a second, and we'll figure this out. <laughs> all right. That's good old Matt Gates. Uh, Fox Hose. I forgot his name. Fox Hose or Is it Sean Hanley? I think Sean Hanley. Pete Hexeth. Hexeth, where the fuck his name is. All right. So we got this guy, Pete Hex. Pete Hexeth. All right, Peak Hexef. If you guys don't know about this guy, we're going to go give a rundown of who he is and why he isn't qualified and why he's in trouble also. Because just like Donald Trump and his hush money, guess what? Pete is involved in hush money also. Oh, Lord. It's the same old song, just a different beat since you've been gone. It's the same old story. Now, I know everybody's talking about, oh, Diddy and everybody. Oh, no, everybody. Cat Williams told us this is the year that the big dick deviants will be exposed. <laughs> That's why I just stay in the house. I don't get involved in none of the nonsense. All right. Who is Peak Hexeth? President-elect Trump tapped the army. We don't even know who the fuck he is. Oh, man, this is on Facebook, man. Ain't nobody trying to be on no Facebook with it. Well, I guess, oh, it's ABC Live. Let me see. Fox News host and army veteran Pete Hegseth to lead the department. And this unleashes the opportunity for real, American-led, America First foreign policy. 44-year-old Tech Seth is a former major in the Army National Guard, a veteran of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, but also a prominent conservative voice in media. In the military, our diversity is not our strength. Our unity is our strength. One of Hexeth's major talking points, he says it's time to clean house at the Pentagon. It's got the largest budget of any agency in the federal government. Um, an incredibly large workforce, both uniformed and you know federal employees. Um, this is this is quite the promotion for somebody who has most recently, um, you know, just been a host on a TV show. The U.S. military, as well as the CIA or the FBI, should be completely apolitical. That is uh, what I think uh, the U.S. Uh, citizen uh, demands, and I think that is what they have, and it needs to remain that way. In his latest book, Hexeth criticizes what he calls woke leadership in the military, arguing that efforts to promote diversity and inclusion have weakened the armed forces. In a recent interview on the Sean Ryan Show podcast, Hexeth has strong opinions on the place of women in combat. I'm straight up just saying we should not have women in combat roles. 
It hasn't made us more effective, hasn't made us more lethal, has made fighting more complicated. He believes those policies are undermining readiness and morale, and he's been sharply critical of transgender service members. Hexeth writes, the next commander in chief will need to clean house and says the military is driving away potential recruits, particularly what he refers to as America's white sons and daughters. Mass deportation. Who did I tell you is going to be the ones that they need to get out there? Because I'm not chasing no motherfucking immigrant down. I'm sorry. And I know hundreds and hundreds of people that are serving right now that didn't join the military to chase down immigrants. Well, I guess most of us, we ain't white American white sons. I guess you can go and take those white, I mean, right, I mean, white, I mean, right, I mean, I, I, white, I mean, right, Hispanics to go get their own people. Uh -huh. But this is just the tip of the iceberg, guys, because in 2017, he committed the R word and then paid hush money. The same as Matt Gates, the same as Donald Trump. Did you guys know who you voted for? You wanted to be white, I mean, right, I mean, white, I mean, right, I mean, white. I don't know which one you wanted to be, but do you know who you voted for? Oh, yeah, and to all those women that, oh, yeah, Trump is going to save us with all of these creeps? With all of these creeps, huh? Okay. This is crazy, right? This is the guy that they want to be in charge of the Department of Defense. You got the president, you got the vice president, and then you got the secretary of defense. He reports to the vice president and the president. He's over all the branches. You got the four-star in the Army, Air Force, Marines, Navy. Well, the Navy, they got an admiral. Well, they got, yeah, they got admirals and shit. They got generals too, but he's in charge of all of them. And he reports up there, but they need to clean house. They need to get America's white sons and daughters. But I just thought this motherfucker said that women shouldn't be in any combat role. So what, you just going to get all the, the American white sons and put them on the front line and the, what the ladies just doing? Just on base, just cooking and cleaning, huh? Oh, that's right. Y'all want to put them out there to go chase down immigrants. But wait, I thought women shouldn't be out there. So that means they're going to, they can't even be on the roundup team because they can't have any weapons. Because if you have a weapon, that means you're in the combat role. So wait a minute. We only have 1.2 million people in the military. And if half of them, or let's just say a third are women, then what? We don't have any military force anywhere else actually protecting America. This is what you're talking about, cleaning house? Or you mean the ladies got a clean house? But then again, they can't clean house because they got creeps like you in power. And we know what you got down in in 2017 because that's all alleged, but <laughs> you trying to cover it up. This is what the fuck is going on, guys, right here. This is Trump's cabinet on top of Linda McMahon, Department of Education. But we're getting rid of the Department of Education. And guess what her husband did? Oh, that's right. Ex trafficking also. They got motherfucking Vince McMahon up and out of here. So you think Linda McMahon didn't know anything about that? This cabinet is all kinds of screwed up. You talk about a Diddy party, you need to be talking about a Donald party. Oh, that's right. Donald used to hang with who? Oh, that's right. Epstein. Epstein was the big dog when it came to flying in and out these miners, wasn't he? Oh, yeah, and that's right. Trump did say. Yeah, Epstein, he likes them pretty. He likes them young, too. Mm. Matt Gates does, too. It's crazy how these dots are starting to connect. It's crazy how these dots are starting to connect. But guess what? It wasn't a problem when he was running. But now everything is getting exposed. But guess what? Oh, Donnie can do no wrong. But let's continue on. Hexeth has also made it clear that he opposes allowing women to serve on the front lines, saying it complicates combat situations and reduces military effectiveness. What do you think when you hear these remarks by someone who's nominated to be the defense secretary? Such outdated views as to not allowing women to serve in whatever ways that they want to serve their country. And by the way, they're volunteering to serve their country. Um, we shouldn't apply restrictions on that if they are capable and qualified 
um, to serve and to serve in combat roles. In 2022, the Army updated qualifications for its basic physical fitness test, allowing more women and older soldiers to pass. The basic fitness test, though, did not result in more women or others passing in greater numbers. And the test is still up for debate in Congress. We've changed the standards in putting them there, which means you've changed the capability of that unit. And if you if you say you haven't, you're a liar. But what hasn't changed is the gender neutral rigorous tests that women must pass to become Green Berets, Army Rangers and Navy Special Warfare Operators. Women account for nearly a fifth of active duty military personnel. That's nearly 230,000 serving for the United States at home and abroad. Just today, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin defended the DOD's commitment to women in the military. Now, this here is our current Secretary of Defense, a retired four star general. Now, if you don't know how the rank goes, when it goes to enlisted, that's what I was. That's what a majority of the military is enlisted. If you're ever going to join the military, go officer. You get way more benefits. You make more money. But as far as officers go, you got 01 all the way up to 010. He was an 010. Now, the guy, Pete Hegseth, he was just a 01234. So we're downgrading from an 010, active duty 010, meaning he was in the field doing this shit his whole career to a guy that automatically gets major. So how it works is you got second lieutenant, first lieutenant, captain. All three of these ranks, they're automatically given. You automatically get promoted to those. Guess what? You automatically get promoted to major also. You got to meet the board when you become a lieutenant colonel, full bird, one star, two star, three star, four star. So just like how we have votes, it's basically, a hey, what have you accomplished? Are you worthy enough to put on this higher rank? Now, if we break it down another step, active duty four star, reserve 04. Meaning he just had a degree. And he was a fucking guy that went on the weekend. No disrespect to my weekend warriors, because a lot of them put in the work. But in order to run the whole Department of Defense, a major compared to all these retired generals, one stars, two, three, four. This major doesn't know a motherfucking thing about running shit. He was a reservist. Like I say, no disrespect to reservists, but you ain't doing this shit for 20 plus years. In order to get to a O10, a four star general, you got to put in at least 25 years. You done seen the real deal shit. That's just the, the difference between these two. That's just a quick little breakdown of that. So I think our, our women uh, add significant value to the United States military, and we should never change that. Father of seven and recently married to his third wife, Hexeth's personal life has also been the center of controversy. His attorney confirmed with ABC News that Hexeth paid a woman who accused him of sexual assault, settling for an undisclosed amount. A police report was filed days after the alleged assault, but Hexeth was never charged. In a statement to ABC News, Hexeth's lawyer says, knowing that it was the height of the Me Too movement and any public accusation would result in his immediate termination from Fox, Mr. Hexeth ultimately decided to enter into a settlement for a significantly reduced amount. You know, we call ourselves conservatives, but what are we really? We're freedom lovers. Hexeth's That's nomination we signals that Trump may take a more traditionalist and hardline approach to military leadership in his next administration. The military brass that led these absurd and insulting initiatives will likewise be removed and they will no longer be in command. They're going to be gone, gone so fast. Hexeth has signaled his possible international policy, calling institutions like the United Nations a farce. Speaking on the Man of War podcast, he said the military under Trump was more effective. They knew he meant business. Kim Jong-un, yep. even though it didn't work, knew Trump meant business. Yes. Fire and fury was a real thing. Uncertainty is a real thing. Uh, the real threat of violence is a real thing. And none of that exists under these globalists uh, who think they can sanction their way. The Pentagon is bracing for sweeping policy changes under the incoming. Now, everything you just heard him say, they knew Trump meant business under Trump. It was, oh, it was so much, maybe so much effective. But now all these motherfuckers are crying 
Oh, why are they sending all this stuff to Ukraine? They let Ukraine shoot off the long distance missiles. Oh, they're going to start a World War III. I thought you motherfuckers were talking about we needed somebody that wasn't going to be weak. So when Biden went ahead and authorized this, oh, he's going to start World War III. He's trying to leave this to Trump to fix. You motherfuckers been talking about being tough. So when Russia started acting tough, what did Biden do? He told Ukraine, go ahead, use them long range missiles on their ass. Call Putin on his motherfucking bluff. Putin ain't did nothing but rewrite the doctrine. Talking about if you now if you do it again, you do it. Shut your ass up. These motherfuckers contradict themselves in everything they do because they want to take credit for it. First, they say Biden is weak, but when Biden applies pressure, why did Biden do that? Why are you sending that money over there to Ukraine? Because we motherfucking got to the same reason Trump sent money to goddamn Ukraine. The same reason Trump sent them RPGs to Ukraine. The Budapest Memorandum states we got to do this. But this motherfucking weak-ass, bitch-ass major don't know a motherfucking thing about what he's talking about. And that's why his ass about to go down for this shit. We need to be strong, man. In front of Trump, it was serious. But now we applying pressure to Russia via Ukraine because guess what? We don't have that many soldiers to go fight a war. It's cheaper to send money to a war than it is to fight a war. It costs $1 million a year per soldier per war. That was in 2003 in Afghanistan. So it's probably about $1.5 million per year now with inflation but guess what he wouldn't know anything about that because while we were in the military doing our jobs he was out here r wording motherfuckers so this is who he's trying to get in his cabinet remember we gotta be tough now we tough why do he do that these are the people that donnie is trying to bring in here this is some wild shit but guess what you white, I mean, right, I mean, right, I mean, well, I can't remember. Is it white or is it right? I can't remember which one it was. This is what the fuck y'all voted for. And he's going to be the one. Well, he was going to be one. He, just like Gates, he's going to have to step down. He was going to be the one to tell the troops to go get those immigrants. Man, it's crazy out here. Trump administration, including a review board who will have the power to remove top brass, undoing DEI accommodations and training within the military. While some may raise questions about whether Hexeth has the experience to lead such a large organization, he does know what it's like to be in the military theater. Pete Hexeth is a combat vet veteran, so he served in Iraq, he served in Afghanistan, he has two bronze stars, and that's significant because not everybody making significant policy decisions in Washington has that experience. Let me tell you guys something. This is real quick. This is this this is just how the military works. He got two bronze stars as a major. He was in Iraq and Afghanistan. Let me tell you something. As an officer, unless you did some heroic shit, if you survive and come back from a deployment as an officer, right hand to the Lord above, if you were an officer and you survived, now I'm not discrediting anybody, you're getting a, a medal, you're getting an award if you're an officer and you come back from a deployment. No if ands, buts about it. Every officer gets awards when they come back from deployments. Enlisted, we don't because there's so many of us. So all he had to do is be in charge of somebody. One good enlisted member does something that goes up to him. He gets all that credit. So when they say he got two bronze stars, he was... I'm going to pull up with Lloyd Austin, the four-star general had, because he was in both of them. But he was actually running shit as a one, two, three, and a four-star. Not just some major that was doing this shit on the motherfucking weekend. But let's continue on here. But his views, particularly on diversity and inclusion, are considered by some to be dangerous and will likely lead to debates during his confirmation on Capitol Hill and beyond. The last thing we need to do is be turning off any able-bodied American who wants to raise their hand and volunteer to serve in uniform as long as we want to continue to fight our wars with all volunteers. There's, it is not just... Uh, a people issue at that point it's a national security issue we had no idea what we were getting ourselves into big changes possible all right so that's that here goes mr lloyd austin lloyd austin's been he was in the military in 1975 his 41 year career he did 41 years so we're going from a four-star general that did 41 years in the army. 
because you know once you become a general it's really like no age limit for real you can really just hang around but you still got to get your ass out there in that field now the highest i met was a three-star and he was the surgeon general of the air force well i man i ain't gonna lie man they hold me they 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 hold me i ain't gonna lie to you he came over i don't know trill 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 was there so uh the surgeon general of the air force came to uh <laughs> came to spain nala and when they do that you got to put on the show it's show and pony i mean a horse and pony show um i was at the clinic and i was at standing at parade rest so he came through the door and it was the chief master sergeant of the air force they came through i was holding the door for him and his wife he like shook my head said hey nice to meet you boy and like he went on about his business but, nice to meet you sir <laughs> so the highest i actually personally met was a three-star i knew a one-star general though Colonel Flowers, one of the, well, General Flowers, I apologize. His father is the longest African American in DOD. I think his father was a two star general, and he's a one star general now. That was my favorite guy right there. But so he, he got into 75, retired in uh, 2016. Trill, you remember? Trill, you remember when the uh the surgeon general, the three star came to Spain Dollar and they had me in the clinic? I was in <laughs> I was upstairs holding the door. He came through. Nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you, ma'am. <laughs> I was in there shaking hands. They lucky they had no baby. I'd have been in there shaking hands and kissing babies. Yeah, General Flowers, man. He a one star, man. I got his email too. He told me I could hit him up. I don't know if he's gonna remember me or not. I just remember we were playing football and we were losing. And I was I'm like, you motherfuckers suck. He's like, hey, 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 more. Calm down. I know, I know, I know. Because he used to play D2 basketball. He actually won a championship, too, man. Coolest general I ever knew, man. But anyway, let's get back to this P guy. So what Pete is talking about also, remember, remember, Pete said we need America's white boys and daughters. Well, guess what else Pete's been trying to do? This is two days ago. what an educational insurgency would look like because i was a counterinsurgency instructor in afghanistan and kind of the phases that mao wrote about yeah. and we're in middle phase one right now which is effectively a tactical retreat where you regroup consolidate and reorganize yep. and as you do so you build your army underground with with the opportunity later on of uh, of 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 taking offensive operations in an overt way mm -hmm. And obviously, all of this is metaphorical and all that good stuff. But <laughs> <laughs> we draw out in the last part of the book what an educational insurgency would look like because I was a counterinsurgency instructor. Uh, educational insurgency. You know what that means, right? It means go up on the ground. We do us some good old boy training. And then when the time is right, we come out and we do our thing. Basically, take, take the best american boys white boys and girls in the military and they come up with this educational insurgents and then they attack who who are you attacking you're going underground in the united states who are you going underground from the americans this is who donald is trying to get to be the secretary of defense this is who's going to be making the decisions on where we attack now of course he wouldn't have the nuclear codes or anything that's going to be with donald the football will be with donald nuclear football that's where they keep like the coldest shit you carry it around with them you know what i'm saying I, I was around one nuclear well let me not say that i was around a football before <laughs> just put it like that i was around a football before but this is this is who he's trying to put in now Now, here goes the actual police report that reveals the details of what Pete did. Now, remember, they say that this didn't happen. If it didn't happen, then why would you pay money? Oh, yeah, that's right. It's hush money. Oh, that's right. So let's go ahead and see what they got to say about the police report about Pete Hegseth. Take us through this police report and the response from Hegseth's camp. 
Right. This report was released late last night by the city attorney of Monterey. This is an account that goes back to October of 2017. And of course, this is details that are coming. Crazy. 2017. Same year, Matt Gates. 2017. Man, what was going on in 2017? Oh, that's right. That's right, guys. Who took office January 17? Who took office in January 2017? Because this is interesting. Matt Gates was doing some shit in 2017. Pete was doing some shit in 2017. What happened in 2017? I'm trying to think. My memory is kind of shot. 2017. What happened in 2017? Let me give me a second, guys. Let me let me, let me do a little bit of research. Oh, that's right. Remember to unite the rally in Charleston? Yeah, 2017 was a crazy year, right? That's right, Cam. What happened in 2017? Oh, the inauguration of the 45th president. So in 2017, Trump got in office and they just started wilding out. So Trump takes office in 2017 and Pete, the guy that Trump wants to bring in, he was taking it. Gates was like, fuck it, I got two of them. I'm going to take it too. I'm going to do it too. Screw you guys, I'm going out. 2017 was a wild year. Damn. So it wasn't just Diddy out here. There was some white folk out here doing the same exact thing. Huh. It just took a little bit of, it took a little bit of time before we started uncovering the facts, but here we are. Now let's hear this police report and then we're going to get on out of here because Pete the freak and Matt Gates, uh, you guys are screwed. Directly from the police report here in which no, no charges were ultimately brought against Hegseth, though several years later he did settle and provide money to Jane Doe, who is in this report. We do not have the name of this woman, but throughout the report she is referred to as Jane Doe. There's competing uh, stories in this police report over the course of 22 pages, in which at a conference that Jane Doe met, Hegseth, it is detailed in here that Hegseth says that over the course of many hours, they ultimately left the uh, a conference bar. They went to the hotel pool and then ultimately went back to a room where they engaged in uh, consensual relations. Jane Doe, however, described to police at the time in this 2017 report that she met Hegseth at a bar, that there was another woman who was with her because Hegseth gave off creepy vibes is how the report described it. And that ultimately she said that she had a little champagne, had a few other drinks, did not remember having hard liquor. And then that's when she believed that there was some sort of a drug that was slipped into her drink because it became fuzzy from there. But she said that she remembered going back to a hotel room with Egg Seth in which they engaged in a, a, a sexual intercourse and that it was not consensual and that she had repeatedly said that she did not want to engage. And that's when she left the, ended up leaving the hotel room and several days later went to the hospital. And again, this is where the police report outlines that there was a video surveillance uh, that included seeing these two individuals, Hegseth and Jane Doe, walking with arms linked in the 1 a.m. hour that night. So these competing stories ultimately, again, led to no charges. But if you look at the statement from Hegseth's attorney, and all of this is so relevant with Hegseth literally on Capitol Hill here as we speak, Tim Parlatori, the attorney for uh, Hegseth, writing, this is a situation where a consensual encounter occurred. And unfortunately, the woman had to come up with a lie to explain why the woman had not come back to her husband's room that night. It wasn't reported until days later until there was pressure from her husband. It was fully investigated by police and video surveillance as well as multiple eyewitnesses statements show that she was the aggressor. The transition team here for Donald Trump has stood by Hegseth, saying that they believe his account of what took place. This is all here uh, uh, coming at a moment in which Hegseth 
is defiant uh, through his attorney, but also himself, that he is completely innocent and up on Capitol Hill now. This is ultimately who he is going to have to make the case to these particularly Republican senators if he wants senators if he wants to get confirmed.